Imagine selling away your lottery ticket of $300 billion, fame, and power for mere $800. All of us love Apple. Not the one which hit Newton, but the one Steve Jobs used to bring a tech revolution. Recently, Apple was worth over $3 trillion. Imagine having 10% of this company today. That roughly accounts for a value of $300 billion. Wait, how much does Elon Musk have? Less than this. But today we aren't talking about Jobs and his big dreams. Instead, we are spotlighting one of the unsung gardeners who left the Apple before it even ripped. We are going to walk into the life of Ronald Wayne, the little-known third co-founder of Apple. Do like and share the content if you love it and check out our other videos to take a sneak peek into the world of billionaires and their dreams. Ronald Before Apple He was born in 1934 to a modest Jewish family and had a very ordinary childhood. His journey is spotlighted from the time when he started his venture in 1971. That venture was not a grand success either. He had set up a company that sold slot machines. The company failed. With Wayne reflecting in 2014, I discovered very quickly that I had no business being in business. I was far better working in engineering. When he was 41, he worked at Atari. And it was there he met a young, impressionable Steve Jobs who would regularly turn to Wayne for all manner of advice. Not just that. Jobs asked for his help in drafting documents and mediating a dispute between Jobs and Wozniak. From traveling to India to preparing the company's first logo and operating manual, Ronald had played a key role in Apple. Wayne and Apple When Apple was incorporated on April 2, 1976, Wayne was named alongside Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak as one of the three co-founders. Jobs intended for him and Wozniak to share an equal 45% equity stake, while Wayne would share 10%. And that's how Wayne was awarded a 10% stake in the company. However, just 12 days after Apple started up, feeling out of his depth because he was standing in the shadow of intellectual giants, Wayne threw in the towel and sold his shares for just $800. Why? Because he was not ready to suffer one more financial loss. He had seen ventures fail and had thought that if Apple had failed, he would have had bruises on top of bruises. He was afraid the boys, who were half his age, were so business savvy and so assetless that creditors would go after him when things inevitably went bad. But he never knew that he had won the lottery but had lost the ticket. Freed from the financial liabilities of the partnership agreement, Wayne spent his free time consulting on projects such as designing an enclosure for Apple Eye. Anyone who hears this story must have regretted how he missed the golden ticket. But in his words, he hasn't regretted his decision. Twenty years later Wayne convincingly stated, I have never had the slightest pangs of regret because I made the best decision with the information available to me at the time. My contribution was not so great that I felt I had been cheated with in any way. A person of lesser character might be paralyzed with bitterness and self-doubt after walking away from such fame and fortune, but not Ron Wayne. He put it behind him and got on with his life. Although Jobs tried over the years to convince Ron to return to Apple as an employee, Wayne's principle was that his friend should retain ownership under an exclusive license to Apple instead of selling. Where things never got better Wayne continued working at Atari until 1978 at which point he took a job at Lawrence Livermore Labs. In 1980, Wayne opened a small store on Dempsey Street in Milpitas, dealing in stamps, coins, and other collectibles. Wayne's philatelics became so successful in just two months that he quit his job at Lawrence Livermore Labs. And one must agree that he is doing great there. Wayne could open a post office in Parham since he has well over 1 million stamps, a conservative estimate. He was running a happy business until after several break-ins. He moved his stamp operations to his home. In July 2011, Wayne published a memoir titled, Adventures of an Apple Founder. His plan for initial exclusivity on the Apple Book Store did not materialize. He has made several financial mistakes. In 2004, age 70, Wayne claims that he was robbed of his life savings, which he kept in a strongbox in his home. He even had to sell his house to recover from debts. He holds a dozen patents but has never had enough capital to make money off any of them. He says that there were at least six times in his life when he thought that he had the world by the tail, when he thought that he had an invention here that's going to make him a fortune. And six times it blew up. He is not a hero. He is not one of the biggest and richest people. He exemplifies how a lack of trust and self-confidence can prevent you from becoming one of the strongest men to an unsung founder. This was Ronald Wayne. For more such stories and learning, do follow our channel and tell us more about your opinion on Ronald Wayne.